Good morning, my friends. My name is Darren Gertis. Uh, today is Wednesday, July 10th, and here's what's happening in Ukraine today. This is the daily brief. 1,100 Russians off the battlefield, two tanks, 11 armored combat vehicles, 36 ar uh, artillery pieces, 57 vehicles and fuel tanks. And this this feels kind of low. And when I saw Andrew Perpetua's numbers for like the first time that I can remember in a long, long time, Russia actually had more. Uh, so Russia had uh, only 46, and Ukraine had 51. Uh, like they showed, like more damaged Ukraine, damaged or destroyed Ukrainian than Russian vehicles and and artillery pieces and things along those lines. And it's it's not usual that that happens. Okay. Meanwhile, however, Ukraine seems to be on the offense here, and that's kind of the big headline. A uh, recent Ukrainian drone attack targeted the Astra Khan region of Russia, targeting objects on the territory of the 4th State Central Interspecific Test Site. Now, this happened about 4 o'clock my time, Eastern Standard. So this was yesterday, like during the day. Then overnight, you saw a number of things. Residents of Rostov-on-Don complained about a UAV attack. According to Russian Ministry of Defense, air defenses shot down two UAVs over Belgorod. I don't know exactly what happened, but they always claimed that they shot everything down. Sometimes you can't get around that because, well, there's big smoke billowing from wherever it is, as it is here. Explosion in Moscow, high-rise apartment building caught on fire. Uh, fire engulfed the roof of the apartment building. Eyewitnesses reported hearing the sounds of an explosion before the fire. That could just be a normal explosion. I mean, whatever a normal explosion is, but it, that could also have been caused by Ukrainians. Uh, heavy fire started in the recyclable materials processing warehouse in Vol Volgograd. Um, so, and here's another picture of the Volgograd uh, warehouse fire. It's hard to deny that. And because of the type of warehouse it was, it seems like it's probably also Ukrainians doing this. Okay, so with all of those, the Ukrainians keep pushing forward with that. But they're pushing forward with the limited material that they have. President Zelensky... Now, let me back up before I say what I'm about to say. So Tucker Carlson came out and said, we got the Zelensky interview. And they're like, eh, we don't really. I said, I wouldn't take an interview with Tucker Carlson. He's already proven he's on the Russian side of this equation. He has said he wants Russia to win uh, and made those kind of statements. I said, find somebody else who you can you know, use to uh, interview you clearly and properly. And someone like Brett Baer would be exactly the right kind of guy. They're at the Ronald uh, Ronald Reagan Institute. And Brett Baer is the hard news anchor at Fox News. Now, I know you're going, oh, Fox News, it's all terrible. But the hard news is actually, even though there's bias in what they select, they're trying to be more fair in hard news than they are in most of their opinion. Their opinion, they're you know, not trying at all. Okay. Um, President Zelensky revealed that the six month delay in a $61 billion U.S. aid package allowed Russians to launch the Kharkiv offensive. But the eventual approval of the aid and the bravery of Ukrainian soldiers led to a successful defense. I think that's pretty fair. Let's hear what he has to say here. Of course, we have permission to use uh, HIMARS through M3. Is it enough? Of course not. It's only a little number of those troops and bases which from, from where Russia uses missiles. If you, you, if you take the example of Kharkiv. Okay, so, so what he's saying here is that they can strike into about 16% of the actual ability of the HIMARS range within Russia. So Russia can just kind of sit behind that range of 16% that they're allowed to get to fire from U.S. missiles into and just kind of thumb their nose at the Ukrainians. And we're still allowing Russia to just with impunity park there within their territory when they can be hit in a time of war because we're afraid of Russia. That's what this amounts to. Take the gloves off. Let them be able to strike back. They attack per, they use per month. 3,500, 1,500. Do we have, of course, can we, can we use Patriots or something similar? For example, yes. But can we? No. Because we don't have, doesn't have to use, doesn't have possibility to use 3,500 missiles of Patriots just 
to defending. That's why you can't use is guided bombs using mm -hmm. jets, where the jets stay on their bases. Do we know these bases? Yes. Yes. <laughs> but you're not being allowed. But we can't. But somebody except us have to say yes. Yeah, stay on the distance from our border from 150 kilometers to 1,000. But mostly, mostly what is very important, from 150 to 500 kilometers. That means that if we have this, then we have. And if we can use it on the territory of Russia, especially on these military targets, if we can, we can do it. Because the guided bomb is the difference between guided bomb and missiles. Of course, missiles can, can go 2,000 kilometers, yes. But thousands, they don't have thousands of missiles. But they have thousands of such guided bombs. Manage this problem and children will live. Yeah, manage this problem and children will live. That's, that's really interesting. So if the U.S. would allow them to use the weapons that they have within the range that they have to go after these, yeah, children will live. Like that's a really interesting point. And I think he's right. Even 50 is nothing. Zelensky says the Ukraine needs 128 F-16 jets. So I, I guess there's 50 that are on the way. Ukrainian President Zelensky has called for 128 uh, jets to counter Russia's daily deployment of 300 aircraft against Ukraine. Like So there's, there's already, even if they get F-16s, this isn't a panacea. This just bolsters the current number of... Um, Ukrainian small time, small air force of of Su twenty seven thirty four whatever and MIGs or whatever that they have, um, and it will help. But really, what they need is something like he's asking for less than half of what the Russian Air Force has here. Uh, so just to give you some perspective about what to expect, when F-16s eventually get there, they were supposed to be there already. But you know, by this by the summer, by the fall, we'll see when they get there. Okay, Russia lacks the munitions and troops to start a major offensive in Ukraine and would need to secure significant ammunition supplies from other countries beyond what it already has in order to do so. He estimated that Russia would be able to maintain its war economy for three to four more years, but not in a major offensive way, just to continue a war of attrition. That's that's where we are right now. It's in a war of attrition until one side or the other can break out. And Ukraine has amassed these... New, It'll take time for Ukraine to amass the munitions and personnel that it needs to mount a new large-scale offensive from its side moving forward. Although they're they're taking it, they're taking the fight to Russia right now with the drones and whatever. And if they can get permission to take the gloves off, they can really do some hammering. Now, if they were to be able to do that, it wouldn't. What it would cause is you could initially hammer some of these bases that were within the 300 kilometer range, and then Russia would have to back off. And they would still do the same thing, but they do it at a further distance, and that would give times, and it would eliminate the threat of the glide bombs, or it would reduce the threat of the glide bombs significantly. Okay, I'm not going to go into this whole article, but Mohammed Kandaviv, uh, a subordinate arrested for former deputy defense minister Timur Ivanov, died under mysterious circumstances. So, as you know, uh, Ivanov was arrested, but this guy was a subordinate deputy defense minister who was arrested on charges of receiving more than a billion rubles in bribes. It is noteworthy that he was engaged in military construction while his chief, Ivanov, is accused of corruption in the sphere. So uh, this is part of that purge of the military that's still going on within Russia. Meanwhile, uh, Orban tries to present himself as some kind of leader in international peace. Remember, he visited Russia, then he visited China. Now he's meeting with er Erdogan uh, without any mandate from the EU. And I was thinking about this without any mandate from the e EU thing, because like he's uh, the president of the rotating council. He's like a rotating head of this president uh, of this EU council that changes. And really, the EU is supposed to speak with one voice through Joseph Burrell, who is the chief diplomat, the high representative, right? So it would kind of be like this, like if the president of my university decided that he wanted to change the grade of one of my students 
and you know just go and interact with the student and say you know what this this student really deserves an a not whatever you assign now, i i've done all the heavy lifting of doing the doing the teaching reviewing the grades doing and he wants to override that that's kind of what orban's doing and he's not really even the president of the university he's just the president of the small slice of this eu system right and he's really um overstepping and overreaching in order to make a name for himself meanwhile security at u.s military bases in europe is on the uh has been increased last week because of information that russian-backed proxies could commit sabotage against u.s troops or facilities you notice that the that they're always bracing against russia nobody's bracing against poland or germany or ireland or <laughs> whatever it is i mean like it's always russia that is the threat there's a reason for this Okay, last thing that I want to show here is uh, Anton Goroshenko. Today and yesterday, Ukraine was on the front pages of many in the international media. It's been a while since I've thanked journalists, those who do their job with dedication, professionalism, and honesty. I know many of you support and root for Ukraine. Thank you. But why did it have to come to a children's hospital being bombed before it finally got international attention? Like something is very, very wrong there. Okay, last thing, and then we'll be done. Well, I have a meme after this, but otherwise. Uh, so the the fundraiser, Pete at the Medic's last fundraiser is still going on. Uh, not yesterday. I didn't show it yesterday, but because of the hospital bit and uh, everything that was going on with that. But uh, uh, the day before, they were up to 95,000 uh, 95, pounds out of 320,000 as the gold. They're up to over 100,000 pounds now. And the fundraiser still goes on. And I think we ought to continue to uh, promote Pete the Medic's last fundraiser and it's going to a worthy uh, goal and if you're interested click the links below I'll wipe out the other links and I'll put it in the pinned comments last little bit I saw this meme and I thought okay yeah context makes all the difference a meteor coming toward earth mm, but a meteor coming to Moscow well wait a minute let me think about this all right my friends thank you for your time thank you for the likes the shares the subscribes and thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.